Today, I want to talk about forgiveness. <coughs> I, uh, I was reading a book last week that Vlad wrote, and it had to do with forgiveness, and that stuck with me all week. And then after that, I just kept feeling like I should speak about this. And there were other things I felt like I should speak about, but this was one of the things I thought I should speak about is the steps in forgiveness. Well, that, okay, I thought I lost sound for a bit. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, different uh, levels in traumas, whatnot, and uh, when it comes to forgiving, unforgiveness, bitterness, all those things. Um, I'll start with offenses. When uh, we, we live in a world, we all know this, where there are so many people, everybody's making choices of their own to try to get through life. And lots of peop people, when they make these choices, they make choices that will harm others. And often by those choices is where we have the choice now to either forgive or we can hold it and get bitter against it. And see, a lot of people, they have this idea that as Christians now, we're going to go through an easy life. Um, we're not going to go through life getting hurt or offended, which isn't true because Jesus says in Luke 17, 1, that it is impossible to go through life without being offended, without offenses. We, I'm paraphrasing, but we live in a, in a fallen creation <clears throat> where a majority of the people... They do not follow Christ. A lot of people, they, they deny him. They want nothing to do with him. But the, only, but the other thing we can do is we can make sure we're not part of the group that are offending people. It says that in 1 Corinthians 8.13. It talks about being a stumbling block. That, well, Paul writes, I'll, I'll read it here, verse for verse. That was my bookmark and I lost it. No, wait, it's actually here. Okay, 1 Corinthians 8.13, it says, Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. <clears throat> Meaning, if... What can I use it as, as an example? If I do something, let's say I, I have this thing that I do. Um, let's, let's take... Let's take driving like a maniac for, not, not, not to the point where it's illegal, but to the point where it is pushing or on edge of breaking the law. To some people, that might be a thing where <clears throat> that is a stumbling block to them, and that could cause them, because they might think it's a sin to drive like that, whatever. And... Well, then therefore, if they go do that, now they have sinned because to them it was a sin. And that's a long topic that I don't really want to get into today. I will, if you guys really want to hear that yet, I'll bring that up eventually. But <clears throat> it is very important that we are not a stumbling block. The Bible says, I believe it's, I had the verse yesterday, Matthew 18, I believe, that Jesus says that it is better for a man... For those that cause people to stumble, he says, for it was better that if the man was tied to a millstone drowned in the depths of the sea. That is if we cause someone to stumble. Being a stumbling block is a dangerous part, very, very dangerous thing. So some people, uh, I had this conversation with a coworker a while ago about smoking and uh, how smoking can be a stumbling block. If, let's say to me, it's not wrong. Personally, I think it is. It's doing damage to your body. You don't need it. But now we have a new Christian who is brand new to the faith. And because we might have said something on that lines that smoking is fine, and they go and smoke, we have caused them to stumble. <coughs> Just like how God tells Ezekiel that if he does not go and warn the others for their unrighteousness 
that it's their, bl their blood is on his hands. It's the same way that if we cause someone to stumble, that their blood is on our hands because we're the ones that caused it, which is why Jesus says that. <clears throat> so, but because we live in a world where being offended or having people betray us is very often, one of the best ways that, uh, or one of the many ways that unforgiveness may start is through betrayal. So let's say like a friend betrays another, a family member betrays another family member and so on. And the devil has a good tactic he likes to use is bitterness. And see, bitterness to, to some of us, we might think that if, if we are bitter towards someone, that it is doing harm to them. But the only one it's doing harm to is you. For betrayal, was betrayal is external, bitterness is internal. Bitterness is on the inside. Betrayal is what has happened to you, but bitterness, you being bitter, is something you choose. It's your own choice. And I'll put bitterness, I'll compare it to a, to a scab, a wound. If you have a wound on your body and you keep picking at it, that's like unforgiveness. I, let's say I just can't forgive Otto. And I will just keep thinking about that, keep bringing it up. I'll talk to you later. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'll keep picking. It's like I keep picking on it because I keep thinking about it. I'm bitter. I keep picking on the scab. I'm not letting it heal. See, when you, very often you guys have heard when you have a scab, you got to leave it alone. It's, it's most fun to pick at it, but you need to leave it alone for the most part. And I'll get to the other part about that very shortly. But see, if, if uh, bitterness, it's your own choice. And the same way, if you are picking your own scab, the infection is not the other person. You are the infection. You are the one that, is, that keeps on taking off the scab over and over again. You are the reason it can't heal. It is not because the other person, for all you know, that person will, might never come to you and ask for an apology. Or apologize to you, I should say. Because sometimes they don't know they've done something wrong. And some people, they feel entitled that when someone has done wrong to them, that that person should now come and apologize to them. The best thing to do is just let it go. The devil will do what he can to use whoever he can against you. And the best thing to do is just forgive. See, when Jesus was on the cross, he forgave the Pharisees. The Pharisees were doing wrong to him. And the Pharisees, they didn't think what they were doing was wrong. They thought what they were doing up to him was fine. That it was the right, right thing to do. But Jesus forgave them. He didn't forgive them for their sake. He forgave them for his sake, for his heart. Jesus was perfect, and Jesus knew that forgiving them was important because he wasn't going to let bitterness come in. It would be really ridiculous if Jesus died on the cross to forgive everybody else's sins, but he couldn't forgive the Pharisees. That wouldn't make sense. <laughs> now, when we have, we may have a... a cut now, I'll put it like this, a wound. And I'll, I'll tie this into trauma. This could be like a solid, like a big hit. Somebody could have hit you hard. And a lot of people, they have childhood trauma and whatnot that they deal with. And they carry it along for, for years, many, many years, and it just doesn't, doesn't heal. And I'll put it like this, like a wound. Even if a while ago, I had, I had pinched my leg like crazy. It was terrible. It turned black instantly, and it was, it was a big mark right here. And see, for that one, I had to pick the scab. But it wasn't because I couldn't let it go. It was because it would, the scab, it would come back, it would grow, and it would start swelling. And it would start getting infected underneath. So I had to take off the top layer, and one day I cleaned it out, and after that I didn't have that problem again. <clears throat> and it's the same way with trauma. 
if you have trauma in your life and you just keep ignoring it, if I would have ignored that, who knows how long that would have taken to heal. But if you have trauma, it's very similar. You can't just leave it alone because it, it, it is an infection. There is an infection underneath. Often a demon may enter into a person through trauma. That's why you have all these people that have, when you listen to people that are uh, homosexual, they deal with all that kind of stuff, they often say they, went, they were abused as a child. And that's where the infection started and it got worse over time. Just like if a person breaks their bone, let's say it's broken right here. I've seen videos of people that broke their bone. They never went to the hospital and they had, they had a, like a three-step arm. It was like a staircase. But, <laughs> see, it can't heal properly. And with, when a person goes through trauma, <clears throat> often there is, there is unforgiveness there too. But there's much deeper in the root. It's, it has to be cleaned out. Every bit of the infection has to be taken out. You can't leave anything in there. If a person has gone through abuse as a child, they can't, you can't leave any of that there without cleaning it, without Jesus. So that's, that's very similar how, how trauma gets, is like a scab that needs to be opened up, cleaned out. But now we have a scar. And now this, this bruise here, that was a couple months ago that this happened, now it's just a scar. It doesn't hurt anymore. And see, when, when a person, when a wound becomes a scar, then a person can talk about it and not feel pain. When lots of people, they talk, if they talk about in their testimonies, whatever, if it isn't fully healed, it's like touching on it. It's like messing around with that, that, uh, that issue in life. Sometimes they will, they'll start crying. They can't handle that up there. But when a person has been healed, and the scar is healed, then it is like, like just like the scar. I can touch this now, it doesn't hurt. And the same way as I look at my past. Most of you know how much, or what, I've shared my testimony a couple times, and I've mentioned that many times, and I've shared it. <laughs> but... <clears throat> My, my old past life, I'm able to talk about it freely. It doesn't bother me. Because it is not a wound for me, it's a scar. In my life, my past, it shows healing. It shows how Jesus healed me from that past life. And I know people that they have dealt, they have these, um, they have gone through very similar things that I have went through. They can't talk about it. They can't think about it, and it's heavy over them because they can't forgive themselves. They keep picking at it, right? And they're, they're holding on to it. And see, when a person can't forgive themselves, that is a real problem because God was able to forgive you. God was, was able to forgive you for whatever you've done. And when a person can't forgive themselves, it's like telling God that their standards are higher than God's. They see that God has forgiven you, but it's like, I see God's forgiven me, but now I'm telling God, look, I see you've forgiven me, but I've done all these terrible things. I know who I am. I know I deserve it. And then I'll keep beating myself over with it. And I will punish myself for it. When God has given that healing freely, God has freely given uh, his forgiveness. which reminds me of a quote. I don't remember where I saw it now, but salvation is free, but following Jesus and um, following after your calling costs everything. That's why Jesus says to those who want to follow him, they need to lay down their life. They need to take up their cross and follow him. That costs everything. But um, with that being said, I want to close this off with, again, time for prayer. If any... I feel if anybody has anything with forgiveness, I feel like that might be something that the Lord's targeting tonight, this unforgiveness, or if there's any, anybody dealing with that. I want to open it up for prayer. I want to ask the, uh, the leaders that I spoke to earlier to come up.
And if you feel like you need prayer for anything, it doesn't have to be just forgiveness. If you need prayer for anything, 